Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. To your younger brothers and sisters who would want to take up engineering in the future. And to your relatives. That's one way you can keep me going inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also, please don't forget to subscribe. Hello, future engineers, subscribers, viewers, and students. There is another video in Calculus on Limits and Continuity. I hope that this video will help you improve and understand further the definition of limits and continuity. So, if f and g are continuous functions with f of 3 equals 5 and limit of quantity 2 f of x minus g of x as x approaches 3 equals 4, find the function value g of 3. Since these functions are continuous, f of x is f the limit of f of x as x approaches 3 is equal to f of 3 also for continuous function and we replace this by 5 and this one is g of 3 so 2 times 5 minus g of 3 equals 4 so 2 times 5 10 minus 4 equals g of 3 so g of 3 therefore equals 6 then another problem use the definition of continuity and the properties of limits to show that the function is continuous at a given number so remember that the condition for continuous functions is that the limit exists and the function value exists and for continuity the limit of the function as x approaches a number is equal to the function value so when x is 4 square root of 7 minus 4 is defined so therefore limit of f of x as x approaches 4 is simply we substitute 4 here it is equal to f of 4 also so limit as x approaches 4 of x square plus square root of 7 minus x so that would be 4 square plus square root of 7 minus 4 so it is 16 plus square root of 3 so since limit of f of x as x approaches 4 is equal to f of 4 which is also 16 plus square root of 3 then the function is continuous at a equals 4 so since limit of f of x as x approaches 4 equals f of 4 f of x is continuous so that's the reason at x equals 4 b quantity x plus 2x cubed close raised to 4 for a equals negative 1 so take note that there's no uh, restriction here this is defined when x is is negative 1 so we simply evaluate the limits by substituting x equals negative 1 and that's also the function value when x is negative 1 so it is quantity negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 cubed close raised to 4 so negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 cubed negative 1 cubed is still negative 1 times 2 so negative 2 minus 1 negative 3 negative 3 quantity to the fourth is positive 81 so since limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to f of negative 1 and that is equal to 81 therefore f of x is continuous at x equals negative 1 then for part c when x is 4 when a is 4 or x is 4 2 times 4 square is 32 minus 1 31 so the denominator does not approach 0 when x is approaching 4 therefore the limit exists and the function value is equal to that limit so we simply substitute x is 4 so that would be 4 plus 1 over 2 times 4 square minus 1 the numerator is 5 the denominator is 31 therefore limit of f of x as x approaches uh, 4 is equal to g of 4 limit of g of x as x approaches 4 equals g of 4 therefore g of x is continuous at x equals 4 
Next batch of problems use the definition of continuity and properties of limits to show that the function is continuous on the given interval. So this time, the given would be the interval. So we have open parenthesis 2 to infinity as interval of this function. So x cannot be equal to 2. That's why 2 is not included as represented by this interval. And when you say 2 comma infinity, we only evaluate limits, limit of the function as x approaches 2 from the right. So this is one-sided limit. And let's show that the function value is the same as the limit when x approaches 2 from the right. So for a, limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right, we substitute 2 from the right. And the numerator is approaching 7, 2 times 2 from the right plus 3 is approaching 7. The denominator is approaching 0 positive. So the value would be 7 over 0 positive, and that is positive infinity. And we get the same value of positive infinity if we substitute in this function 2 just from the right. So limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right is equal to f of 2 from the right. So it is continuous at the left end point, which is 2, but 2 from the right, not 2 from the left. Then how about the other end, which is infinity? So we evaluate limit of 2x plus 3 over x minus 2 as x approaches infinity. Before we do that, we divide the numerator and the denominator by x. And we can do that because we divide the same quantity, and that same quantity will give us 1. So this reduces to limit of 2 plus 3 over x over 1 minus 2 over x. So as x approaches infinity, 3 over infinity is approaching 0, so that would be 0. And 2 over x is also approaching 0 because x is very large. Therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is also the function value when x is infinite or when, yes, when a approaches infinity or x approaches infinity. And that is infinity. And in this case, as x approaches infinity, the value is 2 over 1 or 2. So since the left, for the left end point, both the limits and the function value are equal to infinity, positive infinity. And for the right endpoint, both the limits and the function value when, when the right part is infinity or x is set to very large number is 2. So therefore, we conclude that f of x is continuous on that given integral. So I'm just presenting here limit as x approaches infinity, but the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, which is equal to the function value when x, when a is 2 from the right, is equal to infinity. So it's also part to prove that the given function is continuous on the given interval. Let's proceed to part b, and the interval is negative infinity, comma, 3, including 3 because we have a closed bracket. Because when x is 3, this is 3 minus 3, 0, square root of 0 is defined. So for part b, let's evaluate uh, limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2 square root of 3 minus uh, x. And it is equal to the function value when the number is set to negative infinity. So take note that 3 minus negative infinity is infinity, positive infinity because x is negative infinity. So this is square root of a very large number times 2, which is also very large. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this function, g of x, is infinity. And that's the function value also when we set x, which is, or a, which is equal to negative very large numbers. It is also infinity. You can try. Uh, 1 times 10 to the 20 if you want, and the result will be the same if you substitute 
the value of x which is negative 1 times 10 to the 20 to the 20 the value is large and they are equal then for the right interval we can consider 3 and 3 from the left so limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 2 squared of 3 minus x is if f of 3 also which is 0 because 3 minus uh, almost 3 but 2.9999 or we can substitute 3 if you want we, we can substitute 3 here for f of 3 they are both equal to 0 so therefore since uh, the limit of g of x as x approaches negative infinity and the function value when a is negative infinity is the same in positive infinity and for the right endpoint the limit of the function g of x as x approaches negative 3 is equal to the function value when when in this uh, function we replace x by a and a is 3 is also 0 both the limit and the and the function value are equal therefore the function g of x is continuous on the given interval then for the last batch of problems evaluate the limits limit of square root of x plus 4 minus 2 over x as x approaches 0 and second part limit of tangent 3x over tangent 5x as x approaches 0 first for this part we multiply the numerator and the dynamic we multiply the numerator by the conjugate of it and divide it by the same uh, quantity which is equal to 1 so the technique here is we because the denominator approaches 0 and the numerator also approaches 0 this is in determinate form so the remedy to this to repair this to get rid of indeterminate form we multiply the numerator by the conjugate of that numerator and the same expression in the denominator so that is limit as x approaches 0 of quantity square root of x plus 4 minus 2 over x times square root of x plus 4 plus 2 over square root of x plus 4 plus 2 so this is imagine difference of two squares so square of the first x plus 4 minus square of the second 4 so this is x plus 4 minus 4 all over x quantity square root of x plus 4 plus 2 so since 4 minus 4 is 0 what remains in the numerator would be x and x can be cancelled with x here so 1 it, it will now result to 1 over square root of x plus 4 plus 2 since the denominator is no longer approaching 0 it is saved now to substitute x is 0 so it is 1 over square root of 0 plus 4 plus 2 and that is equal to square root of 4 is 2 plus 2 4 so 1 one fourth so the limit is one fourth then for part b we transform tangent into sine over cosine as well as in the denominator and we introduce 3x so we also multiply the whole numerator by 3x the denominator we multiply this by 5x and we transform tangent x into sine 5x over cosine 5x with sine 5x divided by 5x also in the numerator sine 3x over 3x also as in here so limit as x approaches 0 because both the numerator and the denominator approach 0 so we have in determinate form again so I introduce 3x here and we have now tangent with the sine 3x over cosine 3x and we put the other 3x here so the 3x over 3x is 1 I'm not uh, changing the original function and that's the purpose to because we know that sign of something over something as x approaches 0 as that something approaches 0 is equal to 1 by the formula already derived and defined in the earlier videos 
And in the denominator, we have 5x quantity sine 5x over 5x over cosine 5x. That's the original sine 5x over cosine 5x tangent 5x. And we introduce 5x here so that 5x over 5x is 1. I'm not changing the equation. And we can cancel x here and simplify this into limit as x approach 0 of 3 over cosine 3 over cosine 3x, then sine 3x over 3x over 5 over cosine 5x. Take note that x is cancelled times sine 5x over 5x. Now, as x approaches 0, limit of sine 3x over 3x and limit of sine 5x over 5x is are equal to 1. And as x approaches 0, cosine of 3 times 0, which is cosine of almost 0, is also 1. You already learned that from the preceding definition because cosine of 0 is 1 as well as this. So therefore, the final answer is 3 fifths because this is 1, 1, 1, 1. So 3 fifths. So that's it for this video and I hope that uh, you learned something from this video and your knowledge in calculus is increased, especially the, the concept on limits and continuity of functions.